Hello, welcome back to Tutorials by Christine. Today we're going to be talking about hemolytic anemia and in particular those red cell shapes that give us clues as to the underlying cause. So when it comes to hemolysis, we suspect this when we see anemia, of course, accompanied by high bilirubin, reduced haptoglobin and a high LDH. When we see this pattern, we'll then further explore this by requesting a blood film and a Coombs test. Today, we're going to get oh so familiar with what you might see on that blood film, as well as how the Coombs test helps us to clinch that diagnosis in a jiffy. In this animated tutorial, we will be using cartoon representations of these red cell shapes, but I'll be sure to link the actual blood film pictures, courtesy of... Dr. Google in the box below. So check out those if you're interested in seeing what the actual cells look like under the microscope. Up first, we have schistocytes. These are also known as fragments because quite literally, these red cells have been mangled and fragmented as part of a sad little story. Once upon a time, this red cell was normal, stepping out of the bone marrow looking brand new. But along the way, as it travelled through the circulation, it came across some obstacles, like a small blood clot or a mechanical heart valve, and as it passed through this, it became Ow. damaged and a shadow of its former self. So schistocytes, or fragments, are due to a mechanical problem in the circulation. And this type of hemolytic anemia is known as MAHA, microangiopathic hemolytic anemia. And when you see MAHA, your next thought should be, why is this happening? If there are indeed micro blood clots in the circulation, destroying these red cells, then these small blood clots are also cutting off the blood supply to various organs. And in this way, you have a serious problem. MAHA goes hand in hand with thrombotic microangiopathies, such as HUS or TTP. And it can also be seen in DIC. What all of these pathologies have in common is the micro blood clots in the circulation and their inherent organ and life-threatening nature. So we need to be able to diagnose these conditions in a jiffy. The micro blood clots tend to use up platelets. And so a key clue to suggest this more sinister pathology is the presence of thrombocytopenia. Next, we must delineate between TMA and DIC. And to do this, we perform coags. In DIC, these mini blood clots are consuming platelets and clotting factors, whilst in TMA, the clots are largely platelet-based and don't tend to consume clotting factors quite so much. So, in TMA, the coags are normal, whilst in DIC, these would be abnormal. So fragments or schistocytes equal MAHA, but MAHA might be caused by a rare, life-threatening condition. So we need to explore beyond the MAHA by checking the platelets and coags, which, when abnormal, will point you in the direction of these life-threatening pathologies. And if you are interested in learning about TMA and how to investigate and manage this, do check out our full animated tutorial on our website. But now we're going to get back into those blood cell shapes. Next up is elliptocytes, which, you guessed it, happen in hereditary elliptocytosis. This cytoskeleton abnormality creates red cells with an oval shape. And whilst that could make for a fashionable set of red cells, this red cell is more vulnerable to destruction. To clinch this diagnosis formally, you can perform osmotic fragility testing. Next up is spherocytes. If you can imagine the red cell is normally a biconcave disc, whilst a spherocyte is like a little ball. Spherocytes can be found in two main scenarios, hereditary spherocytosis or autoimmune hemolytic anemia. And we can delineate between these pathologies using the Coombs test. Now, what on earth is the Coombs test? The Coombs test is really just asking ourselves, is there an antibody stuck to this red cell or not? If the answer is yes, you'll have a positive Coombs test and you're dealing with autoimmune hemolytic anemia. If the answer is no and there's no antibody stuck to that red cell, it's a negative Coombs test and you're now in the hereditary spherocytosis category. 
Now, if you are dealing with autoimmune hemolysis, this can be primary or secondary, warm or cold, and that is a whole different tutorial for another day. Right now, I want to stay focused on the blood cell shapes and how they relate to hemolytic anemia. But some of you might be wondering, why is it that these red cells with antibodies stuck to them become spherical? Immune cells will come by and kind of nibble away at the sides of the blood cell and overall those changes give it this spherical shape. The next cell type to look out for are those associated with hemoglobinopathies. Hemoglobin is composed of alpha and beta chains and depending on what alpha and beta chains are combined, this will change the overall form and function of hemoglobin. Ultimately, in this category, we have sickle cell anemia and thalassemias. There may be particular red cell appearances that point us in either direction. Sickle cells are crescent shaped cells which go along with sickle cell anemia, whilst thalassemia patients may have hypochromic microcytic red cells. But the key diagnostic test for a hemoglobinopathy is HB electrophoresis. This test gets to the bottom of that person's hemoglobin structure. It identifies the alpha chains, the beta chains, any other chains. This test, HB electrophoresis, is how you diagnose these hemoglobinopathies. Next in the red cell lineup are Heinz bodies and bite cells, both of which happen in G6PD deficiency. G6PD is an enzyme involved in glutathione turnover and glutathione protects our red cells from oxidative stress. So when the G6PD is deficient, that reduces the glutathione in our red cells and makes our red cells prone to oxidative damage and this leads to Heinz bodies and bite cells. Heinz bodies are just denatured haemoglobin inside the red cell that you can physically see on the blood film. When a macrophage comes along and sees a Heinz body, it takes a chunk out of that red cell and in doing so creates a bite cell. You gotta love that kind of a sass from a macrophage. So people with G6PD deficiency in times of high oxidative stress, such as infection or ingesting certain foods like fava beans, the G6PD enzyme capacity can be overwhelmed, which leads to oxidative damage to haemoglobin, the formation of these Heinz bodies, which will in turn be chomped up by macrophages, making these bite cells. To confirm this diagnosis though, we do a G6PD assay for the win. And the last red cell abnormality to discuss is the presence of visible parasites inside the red cell. Think malaria and babesiosis. Of course, the clinical context of this patient is likely to be a febrile illness and a returned traveller or someone who resides in an endemic area. But if you do want to look for these pesky little parasites, you can perform a thick and thin blood film as well as more specific testing. Okay, that all sounds fine. But can you have hemolysis and completely normal appearing red cells? The answer is yes, you absolutely can. One condition which comes to mind is PNH, paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobinuria. This condition has hemolysis in spades, but it's not because the red cells are abnormal. It's because a population of red cells lack the complement receptors on their surface, and so these red cells are destroyed by complement. These destroyed red cells are not going to appear on your blood film. So the combination of hemolysis and normal red cells on a blood film should make you think about PNH. You can clinch this diagnosis more formally by performing flow cytometry on the peripheral blood. And if PNH is something you're interested to learn more about, check out our PNH YouTube video for the win. And so those are some of the common blood cell shapes that help guide your differential diagnosis of hemolytic anemia. I hope this helped your studies and doctoring at large. Have an awesome day and we'll see you again soon for some more high yield learning. Bye.